Well, welcome to my shop. Um, this video is meant to be an educational aid for students of piano tuning who are just getting into it. Because there's one skill that I find takes the students some time to understand, yet they don't really, in my crash courses, they don't have that time to waste. And if I could just give you a little bit of a, a an educational video where you could, you know, get a, get a heads up or a head start on this uh, subject, on this topic, it would really, really improve the um, efficiency of the course. And basically all of these videos are that's the reason I do them, so that in the course students are tuning and not listening to me talk. So, um, more. I mean, I have to talk, but uh, at least uh, the less, the more tuning you do and the less I can watch you tune, the better. So, um, the skills that a piano tuner need, uh, the skills that a student needs to learn to tune pianos are a good understanding of music theory because we're playing the piano. It's a musical instrument. Um, good hand-eye coordination. That's good for uh, understanding how the pitch changes when you're moving the hammer. Um, a good musical ear. There is, you know, there's we're playing musical sounds, so, uh, you know, understanding what a note sounds like or if it's high or low. I mean, these are important things. But the thing I want to talk about today is a spatial aptitude. Now what I mean by a spatial aptitude is that you can imagine in your mind how things relate to each other, how physical things relate to each other. It's like you have little fingers in your brain and you can manifest these objects and you can touch these objects and move them around inside your brain. That's, that's the... Uh, that's the sensation I get anyways when I start imagining how things relate to each other in the physical world. So how, what does this have to do with pianos and music? Well, the fact is uh, music is very spatial because when we speak of notes, we can speak of high notes and low notes. So that means these, these notes have a, a spatial relationship to each other. Yes, on the piano it's right and left, but in our minds, we can think of them as high and low. We have notes that are close together and notes that are far apart. So the distances between the notes can be thought of as a concrete physical measurement that may not have a number, but still when we relate one size to another, you know, these are close together, these are far apart. Or you can think these are close together and these are far apart. So there's a relationship between different sets of intervals that can be thought of in terms of actual physical measurements, not numeric measurements, but relative measurements. Very, very important. So um, one area where this spatial aptitude comes in really handy is when we talk about interval sizes. So intervals can be pure, they can be wide, or they can be narrow. And uh, in order to understand a little bit about that, let's talk about the pure interval. In order to understand what a pure interval is, we need to understand what the harmonic series is. So the harmonic series, if you've watched my other video on the harmonic series, is a series of frequencies above a note. A series of frequencies above a note that are created when you play that note. So above this E, we have these notes. It's an octave, then a fifth in the next octave, and then a major triad in the third octave. That's all we really need to talk about for the piano. There's more, but that's enough. So when you play two notes, you will have two harmonic series above the notes. Uh, sorry, you'll have one harmonic series above one note, and just a second, I'm going to find another mute. Okay. So when we play this E, you're 
you're going to have those frequencies ringing. And when we play this B, when you play this B, there's also a harmonic series of an octave plus the fifth in the next octave plus the major chord. So when we play the two notes, there may be a spot where the harmonic series of one note is the same as the, the, the partial, one of the partials from the harmonic series of one note is the, it matches a partial of the other note. And when we play the E and the B, we find that the um, B belongs to both harmonic series. So it's the second partial of this B, and it's the third partial of this E. You've got the octave and then the fifth. So when you play each of these notes, there will be a frequency from each partial series that is almost, it could be exactly the same or close. So if I just press this down and hit the B, we hear a note ringing. Then if I play the B and hit that, we hear another note ring. The same pitch, um, well, maybe, exactly, we don't know. But when you play them together, if those two partials have exactly the same frequency, then they will behave exactly as two unisons with exactly the same frequency. That is, no beating. So, let's listen. There's beating at that coincidental partial. If we are to, if we could, if we tune this interval so that there's no beating at that coincidental partial, we say that this interval is pure. In my classes, I will demonstrate by putting my hands up like this. And I'm, this is not a rock concert, but maybe, you know, if you wanted to go to a rock concert, you know, pure, pure. Anyways, I'm trying to be funny. Maybe it's not working. Okay, so when I put my hands like this, this represents pure. Pure interval. Okay? Now, if I was to raise the top note, okay, I'm trying to think if I'm doing this right for you. Uh, so let me think now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble trying to imagine the mirror image, but okay, th this is the top note, right, for you? Yes. Right. Okay, so if I was to raise the top note, it's not pure anymore, and there's going to be beating. Because it's not pure, by definition. Pure means no beating. So let's raise it. The B is raised. And we hear beating. Okay? We say that that interval is wide. That interval is wide. Okay? Now, we could lower the bottom note and still get a wide interval. Okay? If we lower the bottom note, it's still wide. Where's the bottom note? Here it is. Okay? So a wide interval could be, you could be thinking of the top note as sharp or the bottom note as flat. And it's the geometrical relationship of those two notes that we often have to analyze when we're tuning pianos. Similarly, we can have narrow intervals. So for this, Pure, but if I lower the top note, it's now narrow. Put it back to pure, take the bottom note and raise it, it's now narrow. Okay? So how do we know if an interval is not pure? Because it's beating. So a beating interval is not pure. But is it wide or narrow? Does it depend on whether it beats fast or slow? The answer to these questions are, are it, we don't know. 
we don't know. Because if we have a pure interval, we have no beating. But you listen as I sing how the beats sound when the interval size changes, okay? So here's a pure interval. Wah. No beats. But now watch as I make it narrow. Wow. Okay? But listen to what happens to the beats when I make them make the interval wide. It's the same. It's the same relationship. So hearing beats does not mean it's wide or narrow. It means it's not pure. It could be wide or it could be narrow. Okay? So uh, I'm going to give a link underneath this video that's going to bring you to a questionnaire. It's a quiz. And it's going to ask you questions like, let's say I've got a beat. Uh, I've got an interval that's wide. What will happen to the beat speeds if I take the top note and raise it? Well, a wide interval is beating. And if you raise the top note, it goes farther from pure. Farther from pure means the beats will speed up. So the answer to that question would be, if I have a wide interval and I raise the top note, the beats will speed up. There's going to be tons of questions just like that. And you need to rifle through those questions quickly. You can't be stopping and thinking about them. All right, so you need to take that quiz and go through it over and over and over again until you can get it quickly. There's going to be a lot of questions, so you can't memorize the answers. All right, so I hope you enjoy that. If you have any questions, just email me. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, click the link at the bottom and go uh, do the quiz, and good luck.